What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and today we finally have the Forbidden Limited List update. It does go into effect on February 7th, so there is a week or so before it really takes effect, but people have been asking for it on every Konami post of any kind for the past couple weeks after the no sooner than date of January 17th. I do wish that they would just have a universal, you know, this is the date we're going to release it approach, but right now they don't, so I suppose we will just take, you know, what we can get. Uh, one of the things people thought going into this is that this ban list was going to maybe put us on the same footing as OCG and maybe make a unified list again because of Master Duel. They didn't do that. Obviously, I was a little bit bummed out about it, but it was really just me kind of hoping that that was the route they were going to go. It didn't seem very realistic, and it was just a pipe dream, if anything. But it does seem like there are a few moves on here that are definitely going to be interesting at the very least. So we're going to go through the list right now and talk about it. If you guys do enjoy the content, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos. And you can click the bell icon for notifications if it is to your liking. But let's get into the video. Starting off with the Forbidden and Limited section, Imperial Order is banned. I am very surprised by this. I did do a full, full video talking about why I didn't think it needed to be banned, how I didn't think they were going to do it because basically it got eroded. They've never banned a card that they eroded, but it looks like this was still too powerful in Konami's eyes. I still don't think Imperial Order really needed to get hit. I do think as one of it's fine, but it looks like that's the decision that they made, and I think a lot of people who play spell-heavy decks like Striker are going to be happy with this decision, so that's good for you. I'm not, like, offended by it. It's not really a huge deal one way or another, but it will at least slow down the um, incessant sort of memeing about, oh, you know, you can only win because you're playing Imperial Order, Dot Deck, whatever, so hopefully that'll get some people to calm down on that front. Now, for the other banned cards, Arch Nemesis Protos, that was talked about quite a lot as an oppressive card that people wanted to see hit. I admit I'm a little surprised that they, they hit it, given that it's only been in the game for a short period of time and only recently has started to see play, but perhaps it's been on their radar for a bit and that's why it didn't get reprinted in the Megatons. It would make a lot of sense. I'm never going to complain about seeing a card of that nature that's like oppressive to the point of like VFD light. I mean, VFD is obviously a lot better, but in the same vein of what it can do and how it can shut off a deck's ability to play, I'm not going to complain about seeing that go. Eva getting banned is great. I think Drytron is really just super over the... Like, I'm just so over the deck. It dominates. It's it's beatable, but you have to draw the right combinations of hands, and they just have endless resources. I would have hit Ben 10 instead, personally, but I think Eva to zero is okay. Uh, anything that'll kind of slow that down and maybe freshen things up a little bit does feel like a good move. And, uh, and Eva's just a good card that can combo off Beatrice, and, and they're obviously not going to hit Beatrice, so you really have to make... Some choices there. And Cymorg, Bird of Sovereignty as a Tri-Brigade way to bring out Barrier Statue of the Wind. I also admit it, I don't think this card should have been banned. I was very much out on it. I thought that there were other cards to hit and or limit and try. Uh, maybe Revolt to 1 because of how, how just kind of unbalanced it is as a card. But I get it. Cymorg is easy to make and it puts out a Floodgate on the board. They decided that this was the, the one they wanted to hit, and so they went for it. I think uh, we may see this come back at some point. I don't think Samorg is like some kind of you know irreparably damaged card, but for now, they don't want the Floodgates dominating, and I guess this was a soft way to hit Tri-Brigade, although I would have liked to see them take a little bit more firm of a stance when it comes to that. Moving on to the limited section, this is huge. There are a lot of things you can tell by the, the graphic just from what Konami posted. Uh, that fairy tale snow is back and we'll get there in a moment but first off Destrudo the Lost Dragons Frisson is back at one this is a card that was banned when Halk came out because people were you know looking at the combo potential with tuners and Halk I think Halk has sort of fallen off a bit in terms of being the dominant package that it once was it's still very good it's still played in a lot of things but it's not like everything is Halk turbo i'm interested to see what happens with Destrudo. ancient fairy dragon still banned so a lot of like loops combos and stuff are are a bit less restrictive but it's still a free card it could be powerful but i've said time and time again that you really do have to take some risks when making updates and if Destrudo is too good then we put him back to zero in the next list comes out fairy tale snow is huge i love this card there's going to be people that are happy about this and there's going to be people that are upset 
This is one you have full access to in Master Duel. It's a really cool card. It's powerful for sure, uh, being able to combo, especially with things like Thunder Dragon, but it is a one of, and they did also limit Monster Gate. Now, Monster Gate getting hit, I, I have to think, is in combination with Snow in some capacity, uh, being able to tribute Snow off Monster Gate, go into something else, banish a bunch of stuff, get a free revival in a book. That's my take on it. I don't know if there's other reasons, perhaps the only real kind of rational thinking I can see why they would have hit Monster Gate, but Fairytale Snow is a big shakeup. Happy to see a move like that, a move that's ballsy and a move that, you know, it may not be the perfect move, but we'll see whether or not Snow has a significant impact. All right, next up, Astrograph Sorcerer. This one's pretty surprising. We've talked about this card on the channel many times before. I've openly admitted I did not play during the format where this card was legal and dominant, so I have never really seen its power firsthand, but it is legal in Master Duel. I have sort of experimented a little bit with it there. I can definitely see why it's considered a good card and why it was banned, but the Pendulum mechanic has been nerfed quite a bit. I'm interested to see whether or not Astrograph will immediately make a splash. It looks like this was your trade-off instead of Electromite. They did not bring Electromite back, but you do get this as a pendulum player with a lot of the new cards coming out so at least you have that to look forward to really an interesting move for sure but again it's just another move that i i applaud at the very least them taking the initiative to make a move that might not be the smartest and see what happens so again it's just i think it's a good step in the right direction in terms of list building and crafting going forward because if a card is too good to come back if astrograph is too good then we just reban it on the next list and it's a lesson learned but they're so afraid to shake things up sometimes so i do appreciate this list doing that Lunalite Tiger is, as a one-of, is pretty good. The card doesn't have a hard once per turn, so it's definitely still loopable. I think limiting it is probably an okay move. I don't think Lunalite's going to go out and dominate anything, but it does sort of intrigue me a little bit, because I, I used to play that deck. I, I thought the Lunalite should all deck was a lot of fun back in the day. Interested to see, but I don't think the one Tiger is going to be enough to make that deck crazy relevant. Lyra Lust got hit with Recital Starling, and I'm not upset about this at all, because this is the one that basically makes it so... Any battle damage you take, your opponent also takes, so there's like FTK, OTK combos with this card and some of the other Lyra Lusks. Pretty happy overall to see that get the axe. I don't particularly, not the axe, I guess it's limited, but hopefully that'll at least slim down the, the ability to loop those kind of things and also just maybe slow down the Lyra Lusk FTK as a whole. Uh, Monster Gate we already discussed, and then Pot of Desires to 1 is very surprising. I don't know what the logic is behind this. Pot of Desire is a polarizing card. Some people love, some people hate. But at one, it's very much hardly worth playing. It's a good card that has its drawbacks but works really well in certain things. I don't know what the rationale is behind the Desire's hit, to be honest. Maybe somebody in the comments will have a better sense of it or what, what they were going for. Uh, I just, I, it seems very random and kind of unnecessary to put it to one. But maybe there's something coming out that is based on banished face down cards or something and they don't want to um promote it i don't know i really i genuinely couldn't tell you why desires go ahead i don't i have zero guesses on that one uh semi-limited is pretty cool for a few reasons a hero lives to two did feel like it was a bit of a long time coming that's at three in ocg and has been for a while so i think they might just be experimenting with that heroes are a really good fun rogue deck but they're not like top tier or anything and this does give them a bit of a boost in terms of increasing the likelihood of you seeing it so it's it's harmless Fusion Destiny to 2 is an interesting move. We do know it's getting reprinted in the upcoming OTS pack. It's also uh, going to be, it'll be an ulti in there. I do think this is going to hurt the price of it quite a bit with that semi-limit because now people are going to have extra copies they're looking to unload. Instead of just putting it to one like the Master Duel list, uh, they're, they're basically moving it there first. We'll see what happens. Nadir Servant to 2 is another move that I think is... A long time coming, it's been limited in the OCG for a while, maybe they're testing with putting it to two first to see if that'll curb the absolute dominance of the Dogmatica package in certain things. No hit to Alistair, so a little bit surprised by that in terms of like Invoked not being hit, maybe this is their way of addressing that. Salamay Great Circle back to two is just them giving Salad another, you know, another piece to play with. I don't really have too much to say about it. I mean, Salamangrid is just the least fun deck to play against ever, but it's not a broken deck or anything anymore, so I guess it's fine. And Scapegoat to 2 is interesting. I do think this card, for the most part, has, you know, is earned the right to sort of come back and, and really kind of see where it's at. So no, no harm, no foul on Scapegoat, in my opinion. But some people are going to be unhappy about this one. I can understand why. It is a free Link 4 if you 
play it right. I just don't think Scapegoat as a whole is going to do what it was doing in 2018 when Lynx were dominating everything and, and there weren't other decks and other answers to be able to stop those strategies. Finally, moving on to the Unlimited section, this one had a few shockers, and I mean that as no pun intended, with Regeki coming back to three. Uh, but all jokes aside, we talked about Regeki quite a bit. I don't think this card even sees play. It's a budget Lightning Storm alternative, I suppose. If you don't have Lightning Storms, you could you could play this as a way to out certain things, but I think Lightning Storm's versatility and, and the ability to go back and forth depending on the scenario is what makes it really powerful. is not going to be suddenly seeing play in a bunch of decks because it came to three. Uh, kind of crazy to think, though, that a card that was banned for so long is now unlimited and has just been sort of rendered obsolete uh, from the original set. Danger Nessie back to three is cool. It came to two and did nothing, so seeing it back to three is cool. I think it might actually be a nice boost for Danger package as a whole, I do think we would need either Suchinoko or Jackalope to come back to two before it was really possible to tell if that deck was going to have any long-term lasting impact, but I'm, I'm fine with Nessie to three. Uh, if only we could put it to 350. Uh, Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon is at three. We knew this was going to happen. It got the errata. It's fine. Let's just move it and move along. Same with Skullcore Bad Joker. This was just them easing it off the list, one ban list at a time. It's cool. It's a better as a three of because now you increase your chances of opening it. Emergency Teleport at three is slightly surprising, but not that surprising. I did predict that this was going to happen. I just didn't know if they'd actually have the guts to do it. That is a really powerful card. Uh, putting it back to three does does give a boost to a lot of psychic decks and does give some consistency increases. So we will see whether or not Emergency Teleport ends up being the right move. And, of course, the one that most people are probably talking about is Skill Drain back to three. I have to admit, I'm a little bit surprised that they moved this to three without putting it to two first. Skill Drain is unlimited in the OCG and has been for a while. This is a huge boost for Eldritch. Like, there's no question about that. Uh, I'm very interested to see what type of impact this will have on the meta. Skill Drain is one of those cards that can be really oppressive and will definitely get people to be playing more spell and trap disruption as a way to out this so be aware of that be aware of skill drain coming back and unfortunately uh if you were intending on playing this i can almost guarantee every copy of it is going to be through the roof right now because it's already expensive before coming to three i think they were like 15 bucks a copy at the cheapest and we have not gotten a reprint of this in anything in a long time so hopefully ghost from the past two or a super in an upcoming ots or something to make this more accessible to the player base because People are going to be wanting skill drain, and it is not easily accessible, so just some food for thought. Maybe a common in the OTS would be even better than a super, but overall, I definitely think this list is not without its flaws, but it is not a bad list either. I think players are going to complain no matter what, and I, I, I respect that that's their choice, but I also think that, you know, there's there's no pleasing people with this game. Some people are going to love things, some people are going to hate them, but there's that, that group of people that are always going to have negative things to say, and negative spins to put on things. What I really want to see from Konami going forward is more diversity with these lists and more risks. Taking something off and being willing to admit, hey, maybe we shouldn't have taken this off, let's put it back later, is really the best way to freshen up the game. I do think this makes things more interesting. It's not necessarily got me chomping at the bit to come back and play all the time IRL, especially with Master Duel's list just being more enjoyable. But I do think it's enough that I'm willing to sort of give it a chance and, uh, and see where things end up. So yeah, that's going to do it for this video, guys. Let me know what you think of the ban list down below. Are you happy with some of the moves? What are you upset about? Um, I'd love to engage in some discussion down there. And yeah, keep an eye out for that. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.